In this video, we will discuss EKG criteria and EKG features in different disorders that cause narrow QRS. Narrow QRS is divided into two sets, physiological and pathological narrow QRS. Pathological is again divided into a regular rhythm narrow QRS and an irregular rhythm narrow QRS. The physiological narrow QRS causes regular QRS and that includes sinus bradycardia, sinus tachycardia, exercise and children. Sinus bradycardia and sinus tachycardia are included in both physiological and pathological regular rhythm because both of them cause physiological and pathological narrowing of QRS. First degree block causes regular rhythm narrow QRS whereas second degree and a third degree block cause irregular rhythm narrow QRS. Atrial flutter causes a regular narrow QRS whereas atrial fibrillation causes irregular narrow QRS but atrial flutter with a variable block causes wide QRS whereas atrial fibrillation with aberrancy and with Wolf Parkinson White syndrome causes wide QRS. We'll discuss them when we discuss wide QRS. The other causes of regular rhythm narrow QRS are nodal or junctional rhythm and AV and artery, atrioventricular nodal reentrant tachycardia, cardiac tamponade, and acute lung conditions. So let's discuss the physiological causes of narrow QRS. First in the series is sinus bradycardia. In sinus bradycardia, the rate is less than 60 beats per minute whereas in sinus tachycardia the rate is more than 100 beats a minute and the rhythm is regular in both of them and a QRS complex is less than 0.12 seconds. Both sinus bradycardia and sinus tachycardia cause decrease in cardiac output. So the physiological causes of sinus bradycardia are that it occurs in athletes during the sleep and in diving seals. In home, the heart rate may go down to as low as 12 beats a minute. And the physiological causes of sinus tachycardia are exercise, fever, anxiety, dehydration, and hypovolemia. Uh, discussing the pathological causes of the narrow QRS with regular rhythm, let's discuss this sinus bradycardia. Causes of uh, pathological sinus bradycardia are divided into cardiac and related causes and non-cardiac causes. Cardiac and related causes include myocardial infarction, especially inferior wall infarction and vagal stimulation, vagal and vasovagal shock. And the non-cardiac causes include neurological increased intracranial pressure and seizures and other causes are hypoglycemia and hypothyroidism. So what's the treatment of the sinus bradycardia? Treatment of sinus bradycardia is atropine isoproterenol or theophylline. Next in the line is sinus tachycardia. Pathological causes of sinus tachycardia are divided into cardiac and related causes and a non-cardiac cause. Cardiac causes include myocardial infarction, heart failure, hypoxia and anemia. Non-cardiac causes include shock, sepsis, dehydration, hypotension and hypovolemia. Amongst other causes are hyperthyroidism and drug withdrawal can also cause sinus tachycardia. Hyperthyroidism, Graves disease may also cause atrial fibrillation. Narrow QRS is usually supraventricular in origin, whereas white QRS complexes are ventricular in origin. Next in the series is first degree heart block. In the first degree heart block, PR interval is prolonged. It's more than 20 milliseconds. Rhythm is regular. PR interval is prolonged. So narrow QRS with regular rhythm. First degree heart block. In the first degree heart block, QRS is narrow if the heart block is proximal to the bundle of his and QRS is wide if it's distal to the block. Next in the line is nodal or the junctional rhythm. In the nodal or the junctional rhythm, the rate is 40 to 60 beats per minute. The rhythm is regular. The P wave is absent or inverted and QRS is less than 0.12 seconds. So absent P wave 
narrow QRS complex, the rate is 40 to 60 beats per minute and the rate is regular and QRS less than 0.12 second is the junctional or the nodal rhythm. There are different types of junctional rhythms, accelerated junctional rhythm and the junctional tachycardia. The only difference between these three types is that of the rate. As I mentioned in nodal or junctional rhythm, the rate is 40 to 60 beats a minute in accelerated junctional rhythm the rate is 60 to 100 beats a minute and in the junctional tachycardia the rate is more than 100 beats a minute next is avnrt atrioventricular nodal reentrant tachycardia avnrt is the most common paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia where the rate is 180 to 250 beats a minute and the rhythm is regular and the QRS is narrow. So why does AV and RT occur? There are two electrical pathways that go around the AV node. One is fast, other is slow and they meet and cancel each other and then they go down into the ventricle. But if there is a block as you see in the picture on the right side, the, there is a block here. So the other one goes around and passes passes back into the atria and the other one dies out because of the block. You can see here this block it dies out and the other one goes back into the atrium. The treatment of the AV nodal reentric tachycardia is carotid sinus massage in the drug adenosine, verapamil and deltazine and the third treatment is electrocardioversion. Next is atrial flutter. In atrial flutter, the atrial rate is 240 to 360 beats a minute. The atrial filter waves have regular sawtooth pattern. They have a small P waves in succession. There is a block of 2 is to 1, 3 is to 1 or 4 is to 1. So the atrial rate is 240 to 360 beats a minute and the ventricular rate is 80 to 120 beats a minute and a QRS is narrow. The ventricular rate in atrial flutter is mainly regular. Next is cardiac tamponade. In cardiac tamponade the EKG is that of the low voltage and there are electrical alternates. Alternating low voltage QRS complexes. Next is acute lung conditions. Acute core pulmonary tension pneumothorax and pulmonary embolism cause narrow QRS complexes. There is tachycardia. The other features in this condition in acute pulmonary conditions are S wave in long lead 1 and Q wave in long lead 3 and T inversion in long lead 3 also. So the formula is S1, Q3 and T3. So narrow QRS complexes with sinus tachycardia in acute pulmonary conditions, S in lead 1, Q in lead 3 and T inversion in lead, long lead 3. S1, Q3 and T3. Now we will discuss narrow QRS with irregular rhythm and the first in the list is sinus arrhythmia. In sinus arrhythmia, the rate is 60 to 100 beats per minute. The rhythm is irregular and the QRS complexes are narrow. Next in the line is second degree heart block. So one point to mention here that in second degree heart block, QRS is narrow if the block is proximal to the bundle of his. There are two types of second degree heart block, Mobitz type 1 and Mobitz type 2. So what are the features of Mobitz type 1? In Mobitz type 1, there is progressively increasing PR interval followed by a drop beat or a missing QRS complex. You see there is progressively increasing PR interval and that is followed by a missing QRS complex. In this condition of Mobitz type 1, atrial rate is regular and ventricular rate is irregular. The second type is Mobitz type 2. In Mobitz type 2, there is fixed PR interval followed by a sudden drop of a QRS complex. Here too, atrial rates are regular and ventricular rate is irregular. See, this is a fixed PR interval followed by a drop beat or a missing QRS complex that makes the ventricular rate irregular. Mobitz type 2 can rapidly progress to complete heart block. Next in the line is third degree heart block. In third degree heart block, the heart rate is slow. It's 40 to 60 beats per minute. P waves are independent of QRS complexes. PP or P2P interval is regular. RR interval is also regular in third degree block, but PR interval is variable. Next is atrial fibrillation. In atrial fibrillation, the atrial 
atrial rate is 350 to 650 beats a minute highest rate it has p waves that are fibrillary weight and the rhythm is irregularly irregular in the atrial fibrillation the ventricular rate is 80 to 180 beats per minute the atrial rate is 350 to 650 and the ventricular rate is 80 to 180 beats per minute with irregularly irregular rhythm and a t inversion see here t inversion and a qrs complex is less than 0.12 seconds why p wave is absent or fibrillary p waves are present in atrial fibrillation there are multiple foci that are rapidly discharging individual muscle fibers firing asynchronously that leads to atrial fibrillation multifocal atrial tachycardia also causes irregular narrow qrs